Guys, I've got a lot of different styles and aesthetics which I would like to recreate inside of Blender. And we're going to start off this cool journey with the amazing Makato Shinkai and his works on the likes of Your Name, Weathering With You, Suzume, and many more. I've picked out some scenes which I would like to examine and break down compositionally, take a deeper dive into the elements which make it so great, and then we're going to look at how to create one or two of those scenes inside of Blender. Obviously this building is taking up a large portion of the frame right here, and we've got nice curvature here. These are actually leading lines, kind of drag your eyes in this direction, and encourage you to look at the rest of the scene over here as well. And we've got this similar kind of thing going on with these train tracks as well. Your eyes are just being directed. If you imagine your eyes as a flow of water, you are being taken all in this direction towards this nice beautiful sky, but not before you've already examined all of these parts of the city, or at least kind of glanced over them. It means that your eyes are going to be taken on a journey, and they're going to be encouraged to experience the whole photo. And may I remind you, this is a single frame, a shot in a movie, and we can examine it like an art piece. And we've obviously got our structures kind of lined up on a rough rule of thirds. Different things line up with these lines. You can see this bridge here, it's kind of aligns with that. These rooftops are kind of like roughly aligned and you don't want perfection in this. Rules exist to be broken. Good photographers will follow the rules and make cool photos, but the best ones will break them. They know what the effects of breaking them are. Obviously this is not breaking these rules in a lot of ways, but we don't want to transform our photo artificially to like strictly match all of these different lines and stuff because I think that it'll just feel unnatural and this looks very very natural while also looking very beautiful compositionally. And we can talk about colour in this as well. This is quite uh, a, fairly, a fairly muted, fairly saturated colour palette for the most part. It feels kind of nostalgic, at the same time slightly dreamy, emotional. And this, this sky lighting is also very beautiful. We can see that the light direction is kind of... This is generally a good sun direction, having it angled like this. You can highlight certain important parts. It's, it's like writing, but you, you want to create a journey with your photographs and with your renders. And that is what you want to think about when trying to recreate the style of Mikado Shinkai's stuff. It doesn't have to be much. It can just be like, you want you want people to look like that. Like that, that is that is a little bit of a story, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's look at another cool image. I believe that last image was from the film Your Name, and this one is from Suzume, his latest work, and it is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous film. My favorite one of his. This one is in a lot of ways much more straightforward. Okay, firstly, obviously, the door. The door is center frame, so like, you know how we talked about rule of thirds? Well, center frame is another great way to just very simply bring focus. So our eyes are immediately just on this door and we have a nice little reflection here as well and we're kind of like bringing the eyes up. It's like a little red carpet for our eyes to follow. And I want you to take notes of these structures over here. These are some prime, prime leading lines. Curved structures work very well as well because your eyes kind of follow a slightly more natural path rather than just like a direct kind of like heavy angle. And so basically your eyes will can follow along these buildings here and all of these lovely details and they arrive in the center at this both kind of the central patch of sky but that also kind of just directs you down to the door again everything everything just points to the door basically and like well you know you might say oh well the center frame like all of, <laughs> is this any of this really necessary are you kind of just making stuff up well i mean yeah but th this just enforces it more um, the center frame thing is doing most of the heavy lifting, obviously, but all of this other compositional stuff is helping to work that too. The symmetry in this photo is also very nice. Obviously, it's not fully symmetrical. This pit is fully in sunlight, this bit is fully in shadow, which is also a nice contrast. But we have got quite a lot of symmetry, not perfect symmetry, obviously. This structure is not mirrored over here or anything like that. But you have to asymmetrize a little bit to make it feel more realistic and grounded, I feel like. All right, so the midground, this all sits as its own sort of unit, separated from everything else. The foreground of the water, this all sits as its own unit as well, um, this is nicely separated. And then the background, obviously we've got some overlap, um, and behind all of these structures that also sits as its own separate, so we've got a very very clear separation. So I think I'll focus on the recreation of something like this. There's still lots of amazing detail and nuance, but it's just a slightly smaller scale and a bit more approachable for a shorter scale project. And I'd recommend that you do the same for your first project or two, just so that you don't get too burned out. And now when I show you how I've rebuilt this, I have a full time lapse on me making it, but I want to break it down a little bit more in detail. One key tip is to utilize what I've just told you and to separate into foreground, midground, and background where possible because creating in these layers will make things much, much easier for you down the line. And it will allow you to kind of create layer by layer and um, block out and separate the um, details in those layers from each other because this is often actually a technique used painting in 2D. So I'd recommend 
using and reapplying that here as well. Alright, so we've got our foreground split up here, including the door, the center of attention. Um, and we've got all of this debris around. I added this debris um, as my own kind of personal touch because I wanted to add, add a little bit more visual variety, personally. This is much cleaner though, I think that's, my, my one's just a bit more messy compositionally. Anyways, back to this. So, foreground over here, got a midground over here. Obviously we've got some separation to these buildings um, over here which kind of um, sit over top of this kind of main um, curved unit. They're not as, as strongly um, like rounded as they are in the render, but I decided to go for something slightly more simplified. And then obviously we've got our background over here. If we go into rendered mode, you can see that that background is just a simple plane because I tend to find that it's much faster and easier to use a immersive um, sky background than it is to actually try and recreate that in 3D. I do have this um, awesome kind of clouds volume thing going on, which gives us some nice lighting. I'm using the Real Sky add-on for Blender for that, which is a free add-on, which you can download. It's pretty cool. And yeah, we can see that this, this is giving us some nice reflections. We've got some awesome water here. If you want to know how to make that, I'm ha more than happy to show you guys. It's quite it's quite simple, to be honest. Um, that, that's that's the whole that's the whole setup there. To recreate the kind of detail and painterly aspects of the um, Suzume scene, I made some pretty complicated textures which combined a lot of different colors and variations in quite unique ways to achieve that, to achieve that very nuanced um, look. And obviously some of them were a lot more simple, like this rusty metal thing is just off Quicksilver Bridge, and I've just modified the colors using this color ramp over here to make it a little bit more brown and rusted in appearance. But I wasn't planning on creating a complete one-to-one -one, um, exact replica and I don't think that you should either. I think that inspiration and recreation um, should have your own personal touch to them in a lot of cases and I think there's definitely cases where you want one-to-one -one, but I think um, especially for practice projects and stuff try, try and play with it a little bit you'll get a better understanding of how everything works together if you try and break some stuff and move it around and change it a little bit and I was originally going for a more realistic interpretation but Overall, it ended up looking a lot more painterly um, and stylized, and so I did lean into that, and I went ahead and added outlines, where I have outlines around everything. You can see those are purple in the clay render. It's definitely not working perfectly for the scene. I should have probably removed the foliage from it because it'll <laughs> and all of these contours because it looks a little bit weird in places, but it helps add to the stylized feel, I think, and especially um, putting over these kind of oil painting and watercolor things and some um, intense bloom and, and uh, depth of field and all of that can make it feel a lot more stylized. But I did create some sort of big city inspired um, scenes with like curved, curved buildings and all of that to try and get myself inspired to start working on this pretty colossal sort of render, but I have not yet got around to it. If you want to see how I've created this stuff for that and um, these little shots that I'm showing right now, I do have a tutorial and kind of showcase which I'll just link for you here. But anyways, thank you so much for watching everybody. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, let me know down in the comments. And yeah, again, thanks for all the support. It's been Yeezen. Bye-bye.